Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about singular value decomposition, SVD, and eigen decomposition, and we'll be comparing the two methods. Uh, I made this video as a complementary video for my other video about principal component analysis, so if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you watch that video. In that video, I treated these methods as black boxes, and now we're going to deep dive into them and well, much like my other videos, we're going to talk about what these methods are and why we use them. We'll talk about the mathematical aspects and the definitions that revolve around them. Let's start with the what and why. Suppose we have some sort of data matrix A uh, with N rows and M columns. And just for the sake of the example, we'll talk about a data table. So the matrix itself is composed of value where for each index ij, the value in the table is the value in the matrix. And a decomposition is a way to take this matrix A and to show it as a multiplication of several other matrices. And the main reason to do that is to break our matrix into different building blocks. And if we do that, and we can kind of uh, play around with the building blocks, we would be able to tell which building blocks are more important and which are less. Let's take an example and look at a particular use of singular value decomposition. Suppose in this example that we don't have a data table, but rather an image like the left image over here. And again, it's a, the, the values are the pixels. And if we perform SVD and decompose this image into several matrices, we can inspect these matrices and the, their components and tell which components are more or less important. We'll see in the following slides how we can assess the importance of these building blocks. And in these two images, what we do is we remove, we zero out all of the building blocks which are uh, ranked 5 to 10 and we see that after we remove them and we reconstruct the image back we get a noisy image and if we remove the top five ranked building blocks then we get an even noisier image so it's a way to kind of uh, again assess the importance of the different components of our matrix a and there's a name for these building blocks the names are the eigenvalues or eigenvectors in case of eigen decomposition. And in case of singular decom uh, value decomposition, it would be uh, singular values and singular vectors. So in the next slides, let's go on and focus on eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Suppose now we have a matrix A, which is a two by two matrix and a vector U in R2, which uh, this is our vector. Okay, just as a random example, if we were to apply A onto U as a multiplication, what would happen is that, well, we shift uh, a U and stretch it, and now it's in a different location. And actually, if we apply any A to any U, we would think that, well, this could stretch anywhere on R2. And that's almost always true, except for eigenvectors. What happens for eigenvectors, suppose V is the eigenvector for A, is that after we apply A as a multiplication onto V, it's, it, it's, it doesn't tilt, it's still on the same axis, and it only changes by a scaling factor, which we will call lambda. And this is actually the, the core definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And an interesting fact is that if we roughly translate the word eigenvector uh, to English, it would be the identifying vector, meaning it's a core characteristic of our matrix A. Let's move on and talk about the mathematical aspects and the notations for these methods. So again, we have singular value decomposition and eigen decomposition. Let's start off with singular value decomposition. 
The three matrices are U, Sigma, and V transpose. Don't be alarmed by this notation. Uh, U and V transpose are said to be the left and right singular vectors, and Sigma are the singular values. For eigen decomposition, we have Q, large lambda, and Q inverse. And of course, Q are the eigenvectors, and lambda are the eigenvalues. These are simply the names of, of the different components. Now, we already saw for eigen decomposition that, well, the definition is, again, A multiplied by the eigenvector is equal to the corresponding, it should be I over here, but the corresponding eigenvalue uh, times the eigenvector itself. And that kind of makes sense for this notation. For this notation, it's slightly more confusing, but it's not that complicated. This is the notation. And so what it's saying is that there are two corresponding vectors, vi and ui, which are the, again, left and right singular vectors. And what happens is the, the definition says that if you apply a onto this specific singular vector, then another singular vector is scaled by sigma. That is, the, again, the core definition of singular value de uh, decomposition. And to have this transpose on the right side, what happens is that, well, we can multiply this equation both sides by vi transpose. And all of the singular vectors and eigenvectors are all unit vectors, meaning if we multiply them by their transpose, it will be equal to one. That's why this gets eliminated. And we end up with A equals, again, sigma i, u i, and v i. And sigma i can be represented as the multiplication in the middle because it's a scalar. And that's why we get this, uh, uh, I guess, structure of, uh, of multiplication. Let's have an even more, uh, I guess, deeper dive into these uh, matrix and what they're built from and their different dimensions. But just one thing before we move on to the next slide. I want to state that SVD can be applied to any rectangular matrix. And so the dimensions of the rows and columns, they don't have to be equal one to another. While in eigen decomposition, they do have to be equal. And so to understand the dimension, let's start with eigen decomposition. I'm sorry, singular value decomposition. And let's just generalize it to a rectangular matrix. Okay. And so again, this is the notation for the decomposition. We saw that in the previous slide. A is from N M of R, and in this specific example, although it could be uh, it could be different, the number of rows is larger than the number of uh, columns. And again, this is the definition, the core definition for singular value decomposition. Let's understand what U and V transpose are built from. U, well, the the columns of U are each a singular vector of size n because we're talking about the rows and so u itself is an n by n matrix because altogether there are n singular vectors and for v again the columns are um well the singular vectors uh, the right singular vectors and they are of size m meaning that v itself is an m by m matrix and just as a note, the rows of V transpose are the right singular vectors. For sigma, we have, well, we, we would want it to be a, a diagonal matrix if N and M were equal, but in this case, it's not the case. So what happens is that we have a diagonal for the first M singular values and zero for everything else. And this is how, this is the dimension of, of, of sigma. And of course, they all correspond to the corresponding uh, left and right uh, singular vectors. Now, if we saw the previous slide, this should be much more intuitive for eigen decomposition. Q, the columns of Q are the eigen vectors. And of course, for lambda, the diagonal are the eigen values. And uh, well, I guess this sums up the notation. I guess it still doesn't really explain uh, well, how different or similar they are one from another. So, so let's talk about their key differences and in the next slides, their key, uh, I guess, uh, similarities. The differences are, one we've already saw that uh, for eigen decomposition, 
uh, it applies only to square matrices. And SVD is a general and it could be applied for rectangular as well. Another difference is that the eigenvectors are not necessarily orthogonal one to another. Okay. And for singular vectors, they are. Meaning, if we have two different representations and we want to apply some sort of transformation for our data, I guess intuitively we would rather have singular vectors, right? Because they are orthogonal and it doesn't squish our data together. Another difference is that eigenvalues, uh, they can be negative. Singular values, on the other hand, are always non-negative. <clears throat> and I think I've, I've talked about this in one of the first slides. Um, the way we assess the importance of the eigenvalues and the singular values or the, the corresponding ve vectors uh, is by the magnitude of the, of course, eigenvalues and singular values. When do these uh, methods coincide? What are their similarities? So if our data matrix A is square and symmetric and also has another property, which is positive semi-definite, uh, which is that everything has to be real values. There's no complex number. And that um, the eigenvalues are all positive. If all of these happen, then they, uh, the two representations for both SVD and eigen decomposition are both the same. And this happens for uh, PCA, principal component analysis where what we do is we find the eigenvectors and values, or the, of course, it's the same singular values and vectors uh, for the covariance matrix. Uh, I guess another similarity I want to point out, which again highlights the uh, similarities between the two methods for PCA, is that if we take a look at the right singular vectors of A, they are actually the eigenvectors of A transpose A. And if you remember from the video of PCA, A transpose A, of course you have to normalize that before, but uh, it's the covariance matrix. And we can see that over here. So let's start out with the definition for A, decomp uh, decomposition by SVD, it's U, Sigma, and V transpose. For A transpose A, well, we plug in this definition into both of these uh, A's. And linear algebra, if we apply transpose to these three matrices as blocks, what happens is that the order changes. And well, whatever is not transposed is now transposed. And because U is a unit vector, uh, we saw that before, both U and V, what happens for this multiplication is that everything is equal to one. It's the identity matrix over here. And so we can eliminate this and we end up with uh, V, uh, sigma transpose sigma and v transpose which is very similar to the notation that we have for eigen decomposition right the only difference is that over here we have two matrices and what happens over here is that well the singular values to the power of two because they're multiplied together are actually the eigenvalues this is also i guess an item to remember for the similarities between the two methods uh, i guess another question is when do we use these? I mean, okay, there are two methods for decomposing matrices, but well, why would we want one over the other? We already talked about you know choosing SVD over eigen decomposition in case the vectors are not orthogonal for eigen decomposition. Usually people use SVD as standard, I guess, because it's stable in terms of numerical stability. And so as default, we would rather use this. Also, we would rather use SVD because it's more general. It applies to um, rectangular matrices. People would prefer to use eigen decomposition for faster computation. Uh, I guess one example we could take out of this is A to the power of Q. If we, we would want to compute this. We would have to take A and multiply it by itself Q times, which is very expensive in terms of computation. And what we can do is decompose it for eigen decomposition in this way, and only raise the um, well say, uh, eigenvalues to the power of Q, which is much more uh, efficient. And then, well, we construct uh, A back and we get A to the power of Q. So this, I guess, is one example. Q would, of course, have to be a large number for this to be efficient, 
but this is one example for when we would want to use eigen decomposition. And thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe.